Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's educational webinar. The title of tonight's session is going to be How Early Orthodontic Treatment Can Improve the Overall Health of the Patients. This educational webinar is made possible by Office Site and is, and is, and is presented by Dr. Rondo of Rondo Seminars. Um, Office Site is proud to support your profession. And tonight, I want to welcome each and every one of you. Um, the goal today is to get you uh, education surrounding key components of your practice, and we thought this was a very valuable session, visual in style, informative, action-packed, so we thought it would be a great value for you to come in and see. It's going to be about 40 minutes in length, followed by a question and answer session. Um, the questions and answers are so important, so go ahead on the right side of your screen, take a look. You have the opportunity right now to, to answers, ask some questions of Dr. Rondo, and we're going to get to as many of those throughout the session as possible. Um, see, you're going to get CE for this course. Uh, at the, through the session, we're going to do three polls, and when we're concluded, I'm going to give you a test and also a PDF. Uh, we can do a digital version or a PDF if you just want the paper. Um, Phone-wise, if you dial in, if you have any audio experience, you'll let me know through the question tool or dial in if you're using the computer for the best experience. Um, if you're really having issues, you know, call go to webinar support. Um, our intent is to record it, assuming technology cooperates. Um, in this session, remember, it's all about you, so go ahead and ask some questions. But with that said, let's meet Dr. Rondo. He's, uh, he's going to be presenting tonight. Dr. Rondo has been practicing for, for 50 plus years. We've known him for probably you know, about 12 now. Um, he lectures about 100 days a year, so he loves giving away his knowledge that he's accumulated over these years. He still actively practices and, and has really built his practice by focusing on the early ortho orthodontic treatment for children. So go ahead and, and pay attention and, and learn some fun things. Dr. Rondo, at this point, I'm going to turn the program over to you, so take it away, Dr. Rondo. Thank you, Don, and thanks very much, everybody, for coming aboard tonight. My subject is early orthodontic treatment for children, and the course outline will talk about functional appliances in mixed dentition, posterior cross bites, deep overbites, anterior cross bites, open bites, and maybe how to attract some new patients. But, I mean, I really think general dentists need to specialize in treating children orthodontically because, as you know, um, many of you probably referred to some orthodontists who've waited, who prefer to wait until the children are older to treat, but the mothers don't want that. The mothers want early treatment. And I've built my practice on early orthodontic treatment. That's the basis of my ortho practice. It says 70% of children have a malocclusion. That's a huge number of children. And almost every mother wants their children treated early. Um, there's the first slide showing your photo showing a retronathic profile on the left and a straight profile on the right. That was done with a functional appliance. And I'll show you a couple of those tonight, how to move the jaw forward. And that took seven months, no surgery. And I, I think you need to start screening patients and even treating them early, and, and sometimes even age seven. Uh, that's another pre-treatment photo. It's an old photo, but you can see quite a change in the profile in, in nine months using a twin block. There's another one, tremendous profile change. I mean, don't you think you change the patient's self-esteem when you change the facial profile? So I want you to concentrate on look at children from the side and also from the front. And many, many times where we find a constricted upper arch, like here. And you can see we've got a very narrow upper arch and a high palate. And then when you expand the arch, you've got a nice low palate and you've got room for all the teeth. So if you want to make room for all the teeth, you have to develop the arch. So I like to develop the arch and not extract teeth. I just don't do very many extractions because I've got all kinds of appliances to develop the arches. Now in North America, I think the trend is basically fixed braces, permanent dentition. I think the majority of orthodontists in, in North America practice that way, although more and more are starting to look at, at the European approach. In North America, I think maybe 60% of the time when you have crooked teeth, you're taken out by cuspids. But in Europe and South America, when you've got crooked teeth, you develop the arches with functional appliances and do a non-extraction. I want you to start to look at the patient's faces too here. So have a look at this and um, look, at, look at the smile here on uh, the future king of England. See the black corners at the side of his mouth? It looks like he had bicuspid extraction. That's never been confirmed to me. But anyway, that's a very narrow arch. And here is his beautiful bride and she's got beautiful wide arch. And here is one of my favorites, of course. 
as Jennifer, and a beautiful broad smile. And here's the patient I treated, and I'm going to show you her tonight. And there you can see her her, slot, her picture before we started, with the narrow arch. And look, once we develop your arch, look how beautiful she is. I mean, just drop dead gorgeous. So let me show you your first patient. Okay, so here's Joshua. He's six years old. And the thing the beginners have to know is if there's no room for the lateral incisors, you need to expand, period. So there's no room for his lateral incisors. These are small laterals. On the lower, he's got two permanent centrals and small laterals. You need to expand upper and lower arches. So the best solution is one of these removal appliances. I'm going to show you some fixed ones, too, with a midline screw. And you've got some clasps holding the teeth in at the side. And you just turn the screw twice a week, and the arch gets slowly wider, and now there's room for the lateral incisors. So if you don't make room for the laterals, most of them come in in the lingual, and then there's no room for the cuspids. So if there's no room for the laterals, you better get in there. So they wear it all the time, but they take it out to clean it. They take it out for active sports, and they adjust the midline screw twice a week. Each turns a quarter of a millimeter. And we also pick lots of colors. We give the children all kinds of different designs so they can pick a color that they like. And we give them a key here that they turn twice a week, put in that hole there, turn it all the way, and the appliance gets bigger and it's painless for the patient. So here's the difference. Look at the beginning. There's no room for these lateral incisors you can see up here. And now when you expand the arch, probably seven millimeters or so, look, it's a beautiful broad arch with, with lots of room for all the teeth. Now she's got a, he's got a chance that all the teeth will come in. He never came back for treatment. So he, all the rest of the teeth must have come in beautifully, and I saved the mother a lot of money. Now here's the lower arch, and you can see two lower central incisors, and they're crowded, and the lateral incisors are very small, and they're crowded. So obviously if you don't expand, those permanent laterals are going to erupt on the lingual, which is not good. So again, we put a lower removal appliance in called the Schwartz appliance, turn that midline screw there, and we'll make room for the teeth. Look, that's open four millimeters, and we're going to make room, hopefully, for the permanent laterals. Here he is with two centrals. Here he is with the four incisors all lined up. Very painless, very beautiful. Probably took about four months. Very easy. And they pay you for this. See, helping the patient save all their teeth, and they pay you. And here are some of the advantages. When you open up the upper arch, you improve nasal breathing. You make room for all the permanent teeth. You end up with a broad arch, easier to speak, beautiful smile. So there he is. You can see all his teeth are erupted now. And look, he's got all his teeth in, and he's all set here. He had no room for these teeth up here, and down here they've all erupted. And again, you've got a nice broad arch here because you expanded that arch about 7 millimeters painlessly. I mean, this is the easy way to do orthodontics. And they paid me $2,000 for that, just two appliances. It cost about $100 each. And the parents are very appreciative. Now. Here's something. I had a great March. Okay, I got 60 new patients in March. 33 were ortho, 17 were TMJ patients, and 10 were sleep patients. Because I do that's all I do in my practice. I don't do anything else. And I got to thank OfficeSite for that because really, um, I've been with OfficeSite for at least 15 years, and I and I use their CEO program and everything, optimization of, of website and. You guys have been a tremendous help to me. I would say probably at least half of those patients came because of you uh, checking out my website. So again, thank you, Don, very much. Oh, you're, you're very welcome, Dr. Rondo. Um, <clears throat> just as a quick word um, from office side, I, was, I just wanted to run through everybody because it's just so important. Um, I mean, these results are just so indicative of, of Dr. Rondo's proactivity. So not only has been proactive in his practice, but I just wanted to run through and show you um, a couple different things as well. So let me run through. This will take about 50 seconds. We'll get back to the topic here. But really, I mean, OfficeSite office site now hosts almost 20,000 practice websites from our Chicago office. My name is Don McKenzie. I've built big sites, little sites, and everything in between. And personally, I've been responsible for constructing about 600. So it's really fun to see those types of results for Dr. Rondo. And all we really advocate here <clears throat> is putting together a strategy that works for you and your practice. Every, everything is not the same for you, depending on where you are in your career and, and are not. But the one thing that I do want you to do, is I want to ask you to please present yourself in, press, in an impressive fashion. 
It's where your patients of today and tomorrow will be impressed. The biggest cohort is the millennials. They're 36 years old. I mean, they're coming on strong, so I want your practice well positioned for the next, uh, in five years, to, to be positioned successfully then. You've got to start now. And so you just jump through, get an impressive web presence, something clean, flat, responsive, rich with HD content education so you can get more case acceptance. Um, use, you know, use these trends to your advantage. You might as well lead the charge. And basically what I want you to do is when somebody searches for your name in practice, I want you to know you're looking impressive online, not just hoping. And that's what Dr. Rondo has really done uh, with us. You know, he's an easy, easy person to work with because he, he's thoughtful. He gives, he gives some um, good advice and coaching, and then our team just puts it together. So that's just the, the short story. For tonight, anybody that wants a, a free consultation, just you jump over to webinars at officesite.com. Um, shoot me an email. What I'll do is we've got different uh, sections. But right now, just really quick, and I'll respect your wishes. If you'd like me to take a look at your web presence, just go ahead and, and just check yes right now in the poll that you see on your screen. And as soon as we have everybody answered, then we'll jump back over to Dr. Rondo and get started. Uh, if, if, you, if you'd like that free, it's free. There's no obligation. I just want you to, to look and, and see what you can do online. So wonderful. So our, looks like we have another few people to answer. And then we'll go ahead and get back to the session. Lovely. OK, Lee and Dr. Rondo, I'm going to go ahead and give that screen right back to you. Thanks, Don. You're you've been welcome. coming to my course you. for about 10 years, and you've done probably hundreds of websites for my for my dentist, and I must say, uh, no, he's been disappointed. OK. So Lee, we're just, OK. That's, what? OK. OK, let's show you another quick case. Here's a little girl with an anterior crossbite. She's eight years old, OK? So do you think the mother wants that little girl to walk around like that for another five, six years till all the permanent teeth are up? I guess so Dr. Not. Rondo, can you, can you um, show your screen? I can't see it. Or can we show the screen again, please? Lee, can you come and show the screen? They can't see it. Okay. There we go. Got it. Thank you. Okay, good. So we'll go back a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, so here we are. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back to where we started here. So here's a little girl with a weak smile, right? Weak smile, got a tooth and crossbite right there. Pretty little girl with a smile that's not very nice. And she's got this tooth here, and the mother's not going to be too impressed. She wants to get that fixed. So here's just one tooth out of alignment. One tooth out of alignment easy to fix. Okay, so first of all we have to open the bite because we've got a deep overbite. So you have to open the bite, so what you do is you put posterior pads back here in your appliance. See? You make the plastic about two millimeters thick, that opens the bite, then we're going to move that tooth forward with a screw. So you'll see in a minute, there's the screw right there. A little four millimeter screw, it's going to turn that twice a week towards the arrow, and that tooth's going to go to cro out of crossbite in about two months. So it's open four millimeters, it opens two millimeters a month. So in two months, that tooth is correct, and the mother's happy. Look at the difference. Look at here. It looks like someone hit that with a hammer. Look at the traumatic occlusion, the bone loss, and look probably in about, that, that would be more than two months. That would probably be in about six months. The bone all filled in beautifully, no braces, and it looks beautiful. I mean, look at the difference between here and here. What would you be willing to pay if that was your daughter? I'm sure you'd be very happy to give me $1,500, $1,000, or $2,000 for that because her smile is going to be so much better. Look at the difference here. Look it up here with that tooth in crossbite and look it down here with that tooth corrected. And that took two months. I mean, it's ridiculous. So there's a tooth in crossbite. There's a tooth corrected. And look at the difference in her smile. I mean, look at her here. It looks, now don't you think lots of times when a girl looks like that, she won't smile and then people think she's not friendly. But look at her here. She looks so much better. She's so happy with her smile. Okay, so we charge two thousand for that. We charge five hundred for the records. We charge fifteen hundred for the for the orthodontic fee, and the mother paid five hundred to start and two hundred a month for five months. And they were very happy to pay me the fifteen hundred plus the five hundred for the records, two thousand dollars. Now you've got to fill a lot of teeth for two thousand dollars, and I put the appliance in. The patient did all the work. Then we waited till the patient was twelve years old, and all the teeth came in. 
Then we put the brackets on and straighten the teeth in 12 months. So 12 months treatment, the teeth are all straight, okay, and that's the final result. Okay, so we remember the crossbite was fixed with the functional appliance, and then the brace is straightened the teeth. So there, and then at the very end, you can see that tooth is at a crossbite, and then we put the lingo bonded retainer on there to make sure the teeth won't move, and we leave that on for many, many years. Okay, again, there's the beginning, and there's the end. So it was done with a functional appliance first, and then braces when she was 12. So she started with a weak smile, and look at that beautiful smile. I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. But really, she looked good within two months after we started the case. And I give them, the, my fee in Ontario is about 6500 I gave them a credit for phase one, which was 1500 So she paid the difference, 5000 for phase two. So it can be very economically favorable for you and a great deal for the patient. Polling question number one. Hey, okay, on your screen, yes, I'm going to pop up a, a, a poll right now. There we go. When you have an anterior crossbite, you must open the bite with posterior acrylic pads on the appliance. When you have an anterior crossbite, you must open the bite with posterior acrylic pads on the appliance. Go ahead and enter your your answer in. True or false? Half, yep, true or false. Half of you have voted. Uh, so we got a few more to vote. Good, about about 75%. So we got to keep going. Another 10 seconds here, and then we'll close the poll. Dr. Adir is wondering if this is a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you commentary in a second. Just go ahead and uh, pick one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And then let's see, we'll share some results. So we had 90% said true, 10% false. Any commentary, Dr. Rendell? The 90% are right. The 90% are right. You have to open the bite with posterior pads or you can't move that front tooth forward. If you've got a cross bite and you're going to push from the back, you've got to have the bite open. So you definitely have to have the posterior pads on your appliance. Or open the bite some other way. I'll show you another way to open the bite later on. Here's another guy five years old. Okay, Five years old. So you can see how, late, how early I'm treating. And look at the open bite in the front here. So he's got this huge anterior open bite. He's five years old. If you leave that, he'll look like that at 15. So you've got to fix it early. So there's, it's caused by an anterior tongue thrust. Now the first thing you have to check is does he have large tonsils? If there's large tonsils, you've got to have the tonsils removed first. If there's no large tonsils, you can go ahead and put a crib in there. See, there's a crib and there's no, there's no tongue or thumb go in that mouth with that crib. And it's a fixed crib. There it is, a fixed crib. So you've got a screw in the middle and you've got a fixed crib in the front and, and that will stop any habit. And there you can see the crib, and that's going to stop any habit. And that bite will close by itself. Okay, there he's got an open bite of seven millimeters, and there the bites close probably in about six months. Actually, it's probably a little longer because now you see the teeth have erupted here. But that bite closed probably within about six months. You take the crib off and then just let all the permanent teeth erupt. So actually, here he's probably five years old. Here he's probably about seven years old. And now we just wait until all the permanent teeth are up. Okay? So I charge them four fifty for the records and fifteen hundred for the for the phase one, which is nineteen fifty. It's just one appliance. Okay, now here he is twelve years old. So here he is at age five with the open bite, and here he is at twelve with the bite closed. And I, his mother asked me, does he need braces? And I said, Well, he looks pretty good. There's just one tooth here that's a little bit off, right? This tooth here's a little bit off, but the mother said, we don't have a lot of money, and maybe we'll just leave it, and they left it. So he never had braces. So he saved a lot of money, right? I mean, he paid $1,950 and no braces. He looks pretty good. So no braces. So you can tell your patients sometimes, if you do phase one, they won't need phase two. If you do phase one, we'll give you a credit towards phase two. So look at this guy now. You'll be surprised at the number of children in your practice, the number of children in your practice that have headaches. So here's an 11-year-old boy with a deep overbite with headaches. Okay, you will be surprised. Okay, now 
For those of you who are interested in TMJ, I gave a nice webinar a couple of weeks ago, Don, on TMJ, and that's on my website and maybe on your website too, I'm not sure, but it's definitely on the Rondo Seminars website at no charge. So there's the deep overbite. So he's got a deep overbite, biting on the roof of his mouth, and we need to fix that. And he's got a class 2 molar relationship, so we've got to move the jaw forward. And he's got a retronathic profile. So just look, there's the maxilla in the normal position. There's the mandible back. He doesn't look very good. We've got to fix that. So we do a fixed anterior bite plate. It's called a riconator. And the riconator is cemented in. So the molar bands are cemented. And then you've got this anterior bite plate in the front. And he can't bite up, you see. He tries to bite up. That keeps his bite open. And there you can see he's with his deep overbite of 6 millimeters. And here he is with his riconator, end to end, one millimeter overjet, one millimeter overbite. And then what we do, we do composite buildups on the primary molars. So we're establishing a new occlusal plane here. Now look at the difference between the molars back here. That's got to be about three or four millimeters. And that first molar will passively erupt in about three months. So that will be establishing a completely new occlusal plane. And we do that, and immediately his headaches go away. Headaches go away immediately, and we fix the o, we fix the overjet and the overbite. I'll show you in just a minute. So there's the overjet, the four millimeters, and there's the overbite. And now he's got a normal overjet, normal overbite. We build up the posterior teeth so he can chew. He needs to be able to chew. So if you don't put composite buildups on the primary molars, he can't chew. Okay? And so what will happen now, when those primary molars come out, the bicuspids will erupt to the same level and you're establishing a new occlusal plane. This is so easy and so important to do this for children. So again, there he's got the deep bite and now that was taken about an hour later. But I mean, maybe his headaches didn't go away in an hour, but I would say within a day they go away. It's amazing. And look at the difference in his face. That's an hour later. See that little crease under his lip? And see now how there's no crease under his lip. He looks much more handsome. In fact, he looks about a year older than this guy, and he's only an hour older. So there we've got, there's the deep overbite, class 2 molar, bring the jaw forward with the riconator, open the bite with the riconator. Now he's got a class 1 cuspid, class 1 molar, normal overjet, normal overbite. We finished him with braces. So we did, we did the riconator, the composite buildups, and the braces. Okay, polling question number two. Don, it's up to you. Okay, loading it up here. Okay, it says the ideal treatment for an anterior tongue thrust is a fixed tongue crib. The ideal treatment for an anterior tongue thrust is a fixed tongue crib. Go ahead and answer true or false. We'll give you about 30 seconds to do so. So, Lee, you're going to come in here for a sec? All right, we've got about so it's seventy percent have voted. So okay, there we go, eighty percent, ninety percent. There's somebody else hanging out there. All right, we'll give you five more seconds. We'll go ahead and close it down. Okay. And so yeah, so we have uh, ninety-four percent said true, six percent said false. The trues have it. You you have to use something fixed. Because if you put a removal appliance in, the child will take it out at night. But most of those habits occur at night, you know, when they're sleeping. So you've got to put the tongue thrust habit, you have to put a fixed crib. It's got to be on for at least five months. I didn't mention that. It should be at least for five months, and then you can cut it off. Okay? So have you got that on your screen now? Can you see an anterior open bite, Don? I do. I see it perfectly. Okay, good. Age seven. So now let me show you one quick case here. She's age seven. She's got an anterior open bite too. So it sounds like we'll probably do the same thing, put a crib on there. So we're going to put a crib on there, but I want you to see that she's got the anterior open bite, but she's got no room for the lateral incisors. See, look, you won't get a permanent lateral incisor in there, and you certainly won't get a permanent lateral incisor in here. So you must expand, and you must use the crib. And there's no room for a lateral incisor here because look at this, that's a deciduous lateral and a deciduous lateral came out of here. So you need to expand upper and lower. So that's the crib I just showed you. There's the crib in the front. There's the screw in the middle. 
and we're going to turn that midline screw and we're going to stop the habit with a crib. We're going to make room for the lateral incisors. So that bite closed down in two months. That's how fast it is. The minute you stop the habit and stop the tongue going from between your teeth, your teeth erupt and that closed in two months. Now we have to hold it there for five months and we have to make, expand the arch and make room for the lateral incisors. So we're going to expand. We'll expand it six millimeters. Looks like we got room for a lateral here, but not over here. So now we've expanded about 10 millimeters. And that might look foreign to a lot of you, but I'll tell you, she's going to have one beautiful smile at the end, and now there's room for the central and lateral incisors. The rule is expand until you have room for the permanent central and lateral incisors, and then stop turning. Okay, so now we're going to, we've got these little separators put in so we can put the bands in the molars and we're going to expand the lower. So now we have a permanent lower fixed appliance and the mother will turn that screw twice a week. And look how nicely that's expanded. It's painless. And now we've expanded upper and lower arches. So remember we showed you in the beginning what, how important it is to have a nice broad smile. Well, this is how she's going to get her broad smile by expanding upper and lower arches. Look at this arch, how narrow it is. No room for the laterals. Look at this arch, room for the centrals, room for the laterals, upper and lower, beautiful arches, and now there's lots of room for all the teeth to come in. Remember, she can breathe better too when you expand the upper arch. So she can breathe better, which is great. Okay, so there she is. And then we just put the braces on, the front teeth, because the mother wanted her front teeth straight. So we charge about another 700 to put the brace on the front teeth. And then now she's got a nice broad arch, she's got straight front teeth, and everybody's happy. And it, it takes like two or three months to straighten those teeth very easily. So I charge her 3000 for that. I charge her for the upper habit appliance with the crib, the lower appliance to expand, and also the braces. Okay, so there she is. I mean, look at the difference between that arch and this arch. I mean, what would you rather have? If you like your little daughter to look like this and let the laterals erupt on the lingual, and the cuspids are up on the buckle, or do you want to expand the arch, put the braces on six teeth, and look like this? I mean, no question that that's what you want. And there's the lower arch expanded, and that's good. So big difference. I mean, that's that's the way you want to do it. That's early orthodontic treatment. Treat them when they're eight years old. Don't wait until it's a big problem when it's 13 years old, and you're looking at a greater possibility of extractions. Here's another guy, five years old, who didn't want to cooperate. So what we do with him, and he's got the same problem, right? There's two centrals there, and the laterals are small, and there's no room for four permanent laterals and central incisors, so you've got to expand the arch. So let me show you what we did. This is a transforce, transverse appliance. It's a fixed expander. There's a coil spring right in here, and that just expands about a millimeter a month. Okay, so here it is. When you put it in, you measure from here to here. Say it's about four millimeters. Then, maybe in four months, it's up to 10 millimeters. So we've gone four, 10, we've expanded six millimeters. So that's expanded six millimeters from here to here. And it was painless. He, he, he just wore it. He didn't do anything else. So there's the upper arch expanded, about six millimeters. Now we're making room for the two central incisors, and we're going to put something in the bottom too. We wanted the bottom expanded, so we, we expanded the bottom also. So we expanded upper and lower arches. So again, look at this narrow arch, upper and lower. Now we've expanded upper and lower arches. And remember, it's fixed. You can't take it out. It's absolutely a pain. Look at the difference here. Look at how this is crowded. Look at how this is a deciduous lateral. Now look, we've got the central and lateral incisors in. It was absolutely painless. It was in for about seven months and we take it out. I mean, it's, it's such an easy way to do it. There was no room for this lateral here, and now we got the two centrals and room for the lateral. He actually moved away, so I didn't have any other slides for him, but I mean, this is so easy. You just cement it in, it works by itself. There's a coil spring in there that just expands by itself. Beautiful arch, so if they don't cooperate, use a fixed appliance. If they cooperate, use a removal appliance. And again, what a difference between that mouth and that mouth and it was absolutely painless. I did nothing. I just cemented the appliance in, saw them every month, and asked them to pay every month. So if you want information on any of my courses, love to have you go to my website, 
rondoseminars.com or call that number and ask for Lee. Now I went to Turkey in 2012 and there's my class. Okay, so we had a nice class in Turkey. And, and I want to show you that my course is sponsored by the International Association of Orthodontics. At the very end, you get a certificate to put up on the wall. So it's kind of nice to put that certificate up from the International Association of Orthodontics. And this guy is quite happy with the certificate. <laughs> Look at the enthusiasm of that guy. He's, he loves it. Okay, now I'm going to show you this case. This is a 15-year-old with this narrow smile. So let me tell, show you how I got the nice smile. Look, this cuspid is almost coming right out of the socket here, right out of the gums. And look at, I want you to look at the, at the arch. See how it's going in? See how the upper arch is going in? And the lower arch is going in. They're all tilted in. So we're going to open that, put a Hyrex screw in there, bands on the molars, mesial rests on the bicuspids with flowable composite, and turn that screw twice a week. And the lower, we need to do the same thing. Look how constricted that is. That might even interfere with her speech if there's no room in her mouth for her tongue. She should have, she's 15, she should have been treated when she was 8. So here's a fixed expander, and again, there's the nickel titanium coil screen that expands. This one you can see the expand, you can see the coil, the other one you couldn't. So we're going to expand that arch, and this is right after the expansion. Okay, no braces. There's her original smile, which you can see dark at the corner of her mouth. And here you can see a beautiful arch. We expanded 10 millimeters. That's no braces. Okay, so then we put the braces on for about a year. And then we put this retainer on with a clear bow in the front. It's called a QCM retainer, which is much nicer than putting a wire across there. And look at the arch. Look at the difference between this arch and this arch. This is beautiful. Look at the tongue here back. Look at the tongue here forward, where it's supposed to be. I mean, what a beautiful arch. And then we put a lingo bond retainer down here so the teeth won't move. And we leave that on for several years. And here's a beautiful upper arch. Look at the arch compared to this. This is kind of a V-shaped arch. Remember, we expanded 10 millimeters, and now we're left with this. So don't think you can't expand teenagers and adults, because you can't. Okay, but this is mostly about children, but I wanted to show you this case because, I mean, she's got a beautiful smile now. And look at from the front. See how these teeth are all tipped in? And now the teeth are more upright, and they're upright over the bone, which is, which is more stable. I mean, that's a beautiful arch, upper and lower. No extractions. And there's her smile at the end. I showed you that earlier, and I mean, that's gorgeous. So here she is with her narrow smile, and I love this picture. She's going to get married soon. And she's going to look fantastic as a bride because we straighten those teeth. Now, this I just want to throw this in a little bit. And this is maybe why you want to think about doing early orthodontic treatment. In Ontario last year, they said that they're, they're going to increase the number of, of dentists by 25% in the next 10 years. And presently in the province of Ontario where I practice, 42% of the dentists are saying they're not busy. And the problem is that the dental, dental schools are increasing their enrollment. At the University of Toronto, they're increasing 10%. The dentists are getting more foreign students in because they're paying 100000 a year or more. So that the dental schools are a business and they want to make money. Older dentists are proponent, propo, postponing retirement. And they say in Ontario, our incomes are going to decrease by 25%. Well, I can say, thanks to you, Don, my income is not decreasing because I'm offering early orthodontic treatment and the mothers want it. If there's a recession on, the mothers are still going to want their children treated. They're going to say no to cosmetics. They're going to say no to crowns and bridges and implants, but they're going to treat their kids. I noticed that during the last recession. I was just as busy as I ever was. Now, what about corporate dentistry? This is why you need to work with OfficeSite, because you need to, you need to, you need to compete with these guys. Think of it years ago, how many smaller pharmacies there were. Now there's none. These corporate offices are open seven days a week. They offer all the services, lower fees. They get supplies on dental supplies, discounts on dental supplies, and they got a large marketing budget. And most of us are not spending enough on marketing. Remember years ago, GM's, GM was number one. Toyota came in and took over. 
So don't, don't, you got to focus on building your practice. And think about early orthodontic treatment for children. It's an easy thing to learn. All these appliances are great. Because I think in the future, we've got to add more services. Remember, 70% of your children have malocclusions. This is a real easy way to increase your income and also your personal satisfaction from your practice. Okay, and most orthodontists are not treating children. Some are, but most aren't. So I think the GP has to get involved. Just want to show you one quick thing. This year, we're having an early orthodontic treatment conference at the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. Look on our website. I'm speaking, of course. We've got an orthodontist speaking who's written a book. Um, it's a fantastic book. This guy's great, all about early treatment. Another orthodontist, Dr. Bubon, is speaking. He's got 11 orthodontic practices. I'd like him to tell us what made him so successful, but it's all early treatment. I've got another general dentist friend of mine that's talking about early treatment, very successful practice. This is a pediatric dentist, Ed Gonzalez. He's talking about early treatment. It's going to be fantastic there, of course. There's your buddy, Mike Sula, who comes to all my courses and talks about websites. And I have a, a practice management specialist, Scott Manning, with an MBA. He's coming also. Okay, let me show you this case. You've got to see this case. This is, this is a case that will blow your mind, okay? Here's a little girl who's 10 years old who's coming in with buck teeth, okay? There she is with a retronathic profile, okay? There she is with a 10-millimeter overjet biting on the roof of her mouth, okay? Deep overbite, deep overbite, okay? Our treatment is going to be an upper banded hyrex, which I've shown you before, and the Mara appliance. Let me show you the Mara appliance. So this is the hyrex, okay? The first thing you have to do on any class two is expand the upper arch, okay? So we've expanded the midline screw six millimeters. Still got that large overjet. What you ask the patient to do when they've got this large overjet, move the jaw forward end to end. So you've got an ideal overjet overbite, and look at the face. Her face is beautiful. That's before treatment. Just move your jaw forward, see what it looks like. That's her biting on her back teeth. That's her biting on her front teeth. Bring the mother in and show her that face. Which face do you like, mother? She says this face. Would you like this done with surgery at 17, or would you like it done now in seven months? No mother has ever said surgery. They always say right now. Okay, let's do it. So there's the Mara plant. Looks like quite a contraption. It's got these two arms coming up from the lower molars. It's got an elbow on the upper, and here's the elbow on the upper. It looks pretty bulky, but remember it's way back in the first molar area, and you don't see anything up front. And so she wears that, and that's what the upper part looks like. It's a hyrex screw in the middle with crowns on the molars, and the lower has got crowns on the molars with his buccal arms and the lingual arch like this. And there she is with her 10 millimeter overjet, and here she is. Now we move the jaw slowly forward. Obviously, I can't show you all the steps tonight. But we start out with a 5 millimeter overjet, and then every two months, move another 2 millimeters. Then we have to put flowable composite back here so she can chew. And then when that comes out, we're going to slowly erupt these teeth one at a time and close that space in. Okay, so here she's got a deep overbite after wearing the Mara for seven months. So we're going to put our friend the Rickinator in with the, with the bite plate here to open the bite. And it's fixed, so the patient can't take it out. And the Rickinator's on the inside, and then you can put brace on the outside. So you can straighten the teeth while you're working on the deep overbite. So here she is with this deep overbite, and here she is now with her bite open, wearing the Rickinator. And then Mary told you we wear elastic to the side to bring the lower teeth up. So we put a rectangular wire in the upper, so the upper teeth won't move. And then we put a, a wire in the lower, okay, a lighter wire in the lower, and then we erupt the teeth with elastics. And that takes maybe, it could take six months to erupt those teeth all at once. And then we end up with the deep overbite fixed. And now we're still erupting these posterior teeth. It looks like they're all erupted on this side. And now she's done. Okay, so here she came in with this deep overbite. And now her overbite is perfect. 
and she came in with this huge 10 millimeter overjet and now her overjet is perfect no overjet remember no surgery she wore the Mara for seven months she wore the Riconator for six months and remember she wore the braces with the Riconator probably for the whole treatment was probably two and a half years so there she is I mean beautiful finish so easy no surgery no surgery looks great yeah, you might criticize that one tooth right there maybe you don't like that one tooth okay so here now we we put the lingual bonded retainer on the inside of the lower teeth and we put a lingual bonded retainer on the lower of the lower teeth and that stays on there's our QCM retainer that we put on she has to wear this just for one year and look at the profile change I mean, look at the face here look how short her face is She's overclosed vertically, and, and I can tell you, I didn't go into TMJ with this patient, but I'm sure she had headaches. Anytime you've got a 10 millimeter overjet and you've got a deep overbite, you've got headaches. And if she doesn't have an age 10, she'll have an age 20 for sure. I put money on it. And here her face is beautiful. Now look at the difference. You don't think I changed her life? Are you kidding me? Look at the buck teeth look. 10 years old and look at her when she's 13 look at that beautiful broad smile but remember we expanded her maybe 6 to 10 millimeters with the Hyrex so she comes in a year later she's 14 now and she says I'm a model I said interesting you just wonder if she kept looking like this if she would have gone modeling or if anybody would have hired her there she is a model there she is a model Look at the difference between here and here. I mean, Don, this is why I do it. This is absolutely why I do it, because I take a little girl like that with unbelievable potential and turn it into this. I mean, just what a beautiful smile. So this case I'm extremely proud of, and when she brought her pictures in, you can just see she's pretty happy with her smile too. So class two, you, you, you have to, this is very important for dentists, okay? When you have a patient with an underdeveloped lower jaw, you have to decide whether you want that patient to be treated with a retractive philosophy or a functional philosophy. I just showed you the functional philosophy. The retractive philosophy is you do fixed braces in permanent dentition. It involves bicuspid extractions usually or headgear. The maxilla is retracted when normally the maxilla is normal you end up with a thin maxillary lip when you bring the upper teeth back. You end up with a constricted arch because you took out two 8 millimeter bicuspids. You end up with a narrow smile and no improvement of TM dysfunction and sometimes causing TM dysfunction, but not always. What's the alternative? Functional philosophy. Remember, that's done in Europe and South America. Functional appliances mixed dentition. That's what I'm urging all you dentists to think about tonight take some course in functional appliances mixed dentition. Then you'll learn non-extraction technique. The mothers will love you. You can use functional appliances to bring the jaw forward. You don't need surgery. You bring the mandible forward. You leave the maxilla, which is normal where it is. You end up with a full maxillary lip, wide arch, broad smile, and a healthy TMJ. This is what you want. And if you don't do it, dentists, I want you to find an orthodontist that does this because there's at least 25% of the orthodontist will do this at least and it's higher in some areas. So there's more and more orthodontists leaning this way, especially ones that have been trained internationally. So class 2 malocclusion, 70%. You really need to learn how to treat class 2s. 25% of all the malocclusions are class 1 and 5% are class 3s. So when you see a model like this, with a class 2 skeletal, the maxilla here and the mandible here, you have to decide which jaw is right and which jaw is wrong. I can tell you about 90% of the time, the lower jaw is too far back. Okay? 90% of the time, the lower jaw is too far back. Okay. So here's another case. I showed you that earlier. That was a twin block in nine months. That was a twin block in nine months. I mean, look at the difference in the profile. That's another patient wearing a twin block for nine months. Now, I'll rec I recommend to the dentist listening tonight, don't focus on the economy. Concentrate on your economy. 
you can't change the economy, but you can change your economy. And you change your economy by maybe offering early orthodontic treatment for children. So take a course. And, and the only thing I'm not showing tonight are the records and the CEFs and the you really need to learn that because if you don't do records, you're at risk. So you really, if you want to use, learn to use these appliances, that's not the tough part. The tough part is learning to take the records. You build your practice by offering non-extraction treatment and non-surgical treatment, okay? Here's a little girl that, believe it or not, you can see I'm much younger. And you can see I treated her probably 20 years ago. And she was going to a psychiatrist due to her headaches. I put her in a twin block and her headaches went away. So here's another patient before and after, another patient before and after, another guy. Look at this little guy. Look at his chin and look at his chin now. Looks fantastic. And that's only a twin block, which I'm going to show you in a minute. For here, Here's information on the courses. But if you want information on the courses, also my courses are online and they're live and you can go on the website and look. Okay. I guess this will be my last case. Okay, I'll do this quickly. She's age eight. Look at this little girl. She's got headaches. And it's kind of an interesting case, okay? An overjet of six biting on the roof of her mouth. Remember, she's eight years old, and she's got headaches every day. Who do you think can help her? Not a medical doctor. They give pills. Not a chiropractor because her jaw is dislocated. You need a dentist to put a functional appliance in there and bring the jaw forward. So there she is with the retronetic mandible. It's pretty easy to diagnose the case that that lower jaw is deficient. Mother brought her home from school due to headaches, daily headaches. What if you were the mother or the father and your daughter is eight years old and she's got headaches every day and she comes home from school with headaches? And all she needs is a twin block to bring her jaw forward, which I'm going to show you right now. And she's got a deep overbite. Be very careful, any adult, female, over the age of 20, with that deep overbite, they've got headaches. Okay, so here's the TMJ Health Questionnaire. Now, I handed that out at my seminar a couple of weeks ago on TMJ. If any of you want that questionnaire, just, just email our office and we'll send it to you. See, look, cheap concern, deep bite and headaches. So there's the twin block, okay? That came out about 40 years ago, and an orthodontist in Scotland, who I've lectured with, Bill Clark, invented that 40 years ago. So all you do is you take the patient with his overjet, and you put this twin block in, and brings the jaw forward. And they wear that for seven months, and it stays forward. It's unbelievable. There's the photos we have to learn to take in the course, because you need good records. And then you're, you're going to charge your $2,000. And look at this, MD wanted her on adult migraine medication. Give me a break. Locks herself in a her room due to headaches. Do you know how happy the mothers are going to be if you can take this patient and get rid of her headaches and also make her look better? So then the mother said a year later, consult with mother, extremely happy with the treatment, no migraines, few headaches. There's the twin block. Obviously, I can't go. The two blocks interlock at 70 degrees like this. And you see your lower jaw can't go back. Because if your lower jaw tries to go back, this block hits this block and they can't go back. I mean, it's foolproof. The only thing is you've got to make sure they wear it. So if the patient's under age 11, you wear the twin block. Over age 11, you wear the Mara. No surgery. Okay? Very easy. Now, some of you are sitting there saying, I don't know if anybody would wear that. Well, they will. You get rid of her headaches. You make her look better. She'll wear it. So the upper usually has a midline screw to expand the arch. Very comfortable very comfortable too, and you have to leave the molars free so they can come up, because we're going to crack the deep overbite by erupting those molars. So those molars are going to come up, and that's how you're going to open the bite. Okay? So believe it or not, she's like this, and within about four to five months, she looks like this. So the jaw comes forward. Now all you have to do is put composite buildups on these teeth back here, and let that molar erupt, and put in a reconator. So you put the twin block in for seven months, then you put a reconator in for six months, and then let all the permanent teeth erupt. But you've done all the hard work with the orthopedic appliance. So when you surgically advance the mandel, remember, many surgical wrists, they must wait until age 17 until they're all through growing, and they have to wear braces from 17 to 19. I finish my kids when they're seven, eight, nine years old, and then just wait till the permanent teeth erupt, and then do the braces for a year and they're done, no surgery. 
So look at the change in her profile. Wow, beautiful. And remember, headaches, no headaches. Headaches, no, look at the face. I mean, when that little girl comes to you with headaches, and you look at the mother and say, you know what? I got the solution for you. I can fix her. And then I, I usually leave the room and they ask my staff, is he telling the truth? And they say, oh yeah, he's telling the truth. And look at the face. I mean, beautiful. Look at that face, no headaches, happy, no malocclusion. Headaches eliminated with a trend block. Polling question number three. There you go. The ideal treatment for a patient with an underdeveloped lower jaw under age 11 is the twin block appliance. True or false? Go ahead. Let's get those answers in. Then we're going to move. Now again, we got the question and answer session coming up pretty soon here. We'll get the CE test out to you. Uh, we got about 60% in. All right, 70%. All right, let's get those last. We'll do another 10, 15 seconds. We'll get those votes in. And we'll hand it back over to Dr. Rondo. I've got one more case to show, or I can answer questions and answers, whatever they want. Uh, let's see. If everybody could go to their questions and just type in what do you want to see. you want to see more cases, or do you want to start at, um, having questions answered? I'll just go ahead and type in the question section what you prefer to see. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to close this poll and share the results. 97% say true and 3% say false. So it's fresh, fresh. Well, oh, you've got a, you've got a <laughs> smart group tonight. Very smart group. Good for you. You're right. Under age 11, it's the twin block. Over age 11 is the Mara. All right. We have an overwhelming. Right, the, the, the votes are coming, and we got cases, cases, more cases. So let's do more okay. cases. <laughs> I got one more fantastic case to show you. One more fantastic case to show you. Lovely. Okay. We'll take it away. We can see your screen again too. Okay. I also want to say I've got um, a discussion forum, and they can send cases to me after after the course is over, and and I can help them with their cases. There's over 750 cases on my website that you can watch. Okay, and so Lee can tell you how to do that. But anyway, so they submit the cases, and I, for slight fee, I give them my impression of of what should be done. And so the course is also on the internet. So you can contact us and the course on the internet, the course is live. One last case, look at her, five years old. Look at the class three, see there's no upper lip. If there's any female dentists out there, they know they need a lip to put lipstick on. So there's no upper lip here. Look at this little concave profile. She actually looks mean, but if you look at it, she's got a deficient upper lip. So she needs to have the upper move forward. That's what she needs. And look at the deep overbite. Here's a cute little girl, class three molar, class three skeletal, heading for orthognathic surgery if nobody fixes her. She's going for orthognathic surgery guaranteed because her lower jaw is going to grow more than her upper jaw from now until 15. Girls stop growing at 15 and boys at 17. So she's got this huge deep overbite, four millimeters, and this is the neat thing. You'll love this. So I do composite buildups on her primary molars. I open the vertical. Can everybody see that she's overclosed vertically like crazy? I mean, it's unbelievable. Just do composite buildups on the primary molars. Well, she has no permanent molars, and everybody asks how much, maybe a millimeter in the front. See, these teeth are all worn down, and these teeth are all worn down. Poor little girl. Look at her. She's chipping and breaking all these teeth. So just about a millimeter here. Okay? So do composite buildups. Now it looks like her first permanent molar is starting to erupt. And we do that to make room for the teeth to erupt. So now we're just building these teeth up, letting the teeth erupt. So she's starting to get two lower centrals in. And she's starting to get her two upper centrals in. Now she's got traumatic occlusion. Remember, she was a class three, right? The minute you open the vertical, though, the mandel rotates down and back, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So now we have to put an appliance in and move those two teeth forward. So I'm going to open the vertical a little more with composite. And I'm going to make an anterior sagittal. So you put a screw here and a screw here. You put the cut distal to the laterals. Okay, the cut distal laterals. So you can turn that screw and that screw. 
these four teeth go forward. The incisors go forward, and all these teeth are anchor units to support it. So you've got, and I opened the bite a little bit, maybe too much, but not much. And they were just making sure there's no crossbite here. And we're going to start turning these screws. We've opened five millimeters. The interesting thing is you open that five millimeters, these teeth don't go five millimeters forward. You open that five, my guess would be two, two and a half. Look at the difference in her face, Dawn. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, look at her upper lip. I showed this to a patient today, and the patient said, here she looks like a boy, here she looks like a girl. Now, maybe because her, 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 teeth, her hair is a little longer, but, but that's unbelievable. I mean, look at the difference. Now, look at this. This is unbelievable. So here she's class three, heading for surgery, if nobody does anything. I did the build-ups and put one little appliance in and moved these teeth forward, and now she's a class one skeleton with an overjet. And now these teeth have erupted, and I'd like her to have a little bit of a deep overbite to restrict the growth of the lower jaw forward. And now we're just going to wait the laterals erupt. She doesn't need expansion. She just needs to have the bite open from here to here. I mean, it's, it's so easy. All I did was four build-ups and one appliance. I mean, it's crazy how easy it is. And look at the difference in her face. Do you think that when I show the mother these photos, do you think she's pretty appreciative? It's unreal. Look at, look at the difference. Now there's four teeth in. And remember, we've established a new occlusal plane, right? These, these primary molars will come out. The bicuspids will erupt to that level. The molars have already erupted back here. So we're getting a new occlusal plane, which is much better than this occlusal plane. Look at the difference. I mean, this is phenomenal. And all I did was four build-ups and one appliance that you turn twice a week for maybe three months. I mean, it's a joke. So you really need dentists that are watching tonight. You really need to think about getting involved in treating these kids. I can tell you, Don, I'll be 74 this year. You said I've been practicing 50 years, you're right, but I just can't stop. How can I stop helping these kids? Look at that little girl with a short little face looking mean, and look, she's looking beautiful. How can you not keep doing this? How can I not keep teaching 100 days a year? Maybe I'll cut back a little on 100. Maybe I'll cut it back to 90 next year. Anyway, that, that's it, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. I had a lot of fun presenting this. I hope you really enjoyed it. Here, Don, is a great golf hole. This is Kauai. Kauai Lagoon's right at the airport, and you have to hit a ball from here to the green. And sometimes, I know, Don, you'd be on that green most of the time, but sometimes I'm not. But it doesn't matter, because <laughs> when you look at this view, who cares? Anyway. Say that again. I got through it all, Don, and, and thanks very much for the opportunity, because I really appreciate work you've done. I wanted to say one thing. You've been coming to my courses for at least 10 years, and, and, you've, and you've probably done 100 or more, 200, 300 websites for my course participants, and not one has complained about you. Not one. Nobody's called me up and said you didn't give them the best service, and you didn't help their practice, and you weren't worth it every nickel. So, so everybody, I would encourage you to get serious, you're, 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 you're up against corporate dentistry, you're up against your colleagues, you're up against so many dentists graduating now, you've got to be different. You've got to set your practice up differently. And, and early orthodontic treatment is a real easy way to grow your practice and have some fun and really help a lot of patients and have your parents so appreciative of what you're doing. Nobody's ever thanked me for a filling, but boy, they really thank me for this kind of work that we're doing. So again, Don, thanks very much. I'd be happy to answer questions. Yeah, you're welcome, and thank you for those kind words. It was funny that you mentioned that and you had the slide on corporate dentistry because that's exactly what I was doing today was I was going through 15,000 different websites and rating them good, okay, medium, and, and just rating them. And, and literally the, what the corporate dentists kind of know is they know that when a when practices aren't representing themselves or just banking on the referral, they can come in over top and get all those extra uh, patients, and so you're almost, by not claiming your web presence and building it, you're almost giving uh, those new patients and referrals to these to the better marketers. So just make sure you're, you're um, thoughtfully presenting yourself out there. So what we're going to do now is that's the top of our hour. So we're going to move to the question and answer section. I'm going to go up for people. It was one hour. We committed to one hour, so we're going to go ahead. I'll put the test. I'm going to drop the PDF in session right now, and also 
Um, so you can go ahead and you can fill it out. If, if you're a paper type of a person, you can fill it out, send it in. I'm also going to copy and paste in a link uh, in the chat section. And you can go ahead and copy that and paste it or click on it, whatever works. And that's a digital link. Go ahead and fill it out. If you're an AGD member, be certain to put in your AGD member number and Lee will automatically submit it for you. Otherwise, Lee at Rondo Seminars is going to send you the certificate out probably as early as tomorrow. So go ahead and do that. Uh, but with that said, I do have questions coming in. And, and Dr. DiNardo has probably been the most patient one. She asked a question a little while back, probably on your second or third case, Dr. Rondo. But if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead. We'll start. The first question is, Dr. DiNardo wants to know, when you add composite to primary molars to increase his vertical dimension, aren't you worried about the pain in the TMJ with such a drastic change in VDO? Is that too much for an adult? Or, uh, that is too much no. for an adult, or is that too much? I'm not sure if I'm interpreting that correctly. I think if you're concerned, you could go gradually. But you know what happens is, if the patient's overclosed vertically then the muscles are very sore because they're contracting all the time. As soon as you restore, what you're doing, you're restoring an overclosed vertical to normal. If you overopen the patient, I think you could cause a problem, but we don't overopen them. We, we, we still allow some freeway space. I mean, it looked like quite a change. Remember, I'm only opening the anterior by one millimeter. I'm opening the anterior by one millimeter, and I'm just filling in the posterior spaces. And it works all the time, all the time. The patients, and I palpate muscles. So I, it's part of my TMJ course. I mean, I teach muscle palpation. And I can tell you that when I, when I have a patient like this, the little girl I just showed that was overclosed vertically, when I palpate her master and her temporalis muscle, she'll be saying, ouch, 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 ouch. And when I increase the vertical and then give her a couple of days to get used to it and then palpate the muscles again, there's no discomfort. And, and believe me, I've been doing this a long time, and if it didn't work, I certainly wouldn't keep doing it. So, so be careful. Do it gradually if you want. If you're a little bit hesitant, then do it gradually, and then keep adding to it. But I, I generally, if you open the, the anterior one millimeter, you're usually going to be pretty close to, to correct. Our next question is from okay. Dr. Huntsman. He wants to know, if you do an expansion, are you placing a Holly retainer? after to keep the arches from collapsing? Oh, good, good question. And I'm sorry I didn't show it. My, my big problem is, Don, I mean, I go much slower in my course. <laughs> and that's a good question. OK, when you expand an arch with either a Schwartz appliance, which is removable, or remember that transforce, transverse appliance, then, then you have to hold for six months. So sometimes you only, you only expand for three months by turning the screw or whatever, and then you hold for six. So tell the mother, most treatments are going to be like nine to 10 months. I also should mention that Five Star Orthodontics is a lab that I work with in Dallas, Texas, Five Star Ortho. I love it because they don't call themselves One Star, they call themselves Five Star. And, and, and Bobby Middle is, is the head guy there, and they make all my appliances. So if I'm showing you a Mara or a transverse, transverse, any of these appliances, and you're not familiar with them, I'd call Bobby Mendel at Five Star Ortho because call Lee at our, if you forget the number, but they're a lab I've been working with for many, many years, like OfficeSite. They're solid, and they're there to help you. That was a good question. Thanks. Good. So Dr. Stanley is interested. Do you place the, them on a soft diet in order for, to prevent the patient from destroying the buildups? No, no, they can eat right away. And I put the buildups on, and I do the buccal and lingual and the clusal. And you don't have to freeze the patient. There's no, there's no injection, because you're just adding to the top of the tooth. But no, I don't put them on a soft diet. They can go right ahead and eat. And uh, they have no problem. OK, that's Got it. it. Yep. Um, so so we, we are over time. Any more questions coming out there? It is interesting, though, we had, we had various professionals. We, we had a. Oh, we had a chiropractor in the audience who found this was uh, wonderful. Um, any He'd be any other questions? At the posture. He would be looking at the posture. He'd be looking at class twos with forward head posture, and then seeing that the head went straight. So he would be very interested in that because I've had chiropractors take my courses, and I've had chiropractors. Of course, I work with chiropractors on my TMJ cases, and and um, if you've got forward head posture, you get neck problems. 
and as soon as you upright the head over the cervical spine, your cervical problems go away. So chiropractors love functional appliances and bringing the jaw forward. He would definitely have seen some neat things. He'd be looking at the neck and we're looking at the, probably the chin. Yes. Let's see. Yeah, his commentary is with these shown problems, there's no doubt that cranial bones with restricted movement uh, is no doubt helped. Yeah, I, I'm so impressed with chiropractors taking CE credits. I mean, they're, they just take constantly take courses on TMJ and cranial sutures and, and, and all kinds of courses. I mean, they're, they're, they're very impressed with the chiropractor profession, keeping ahead. And I think it's probably partially due to the fact that physicians are always trying to criticize them and, and they want to keep learning so they can, they can keep helping patients. So I, I do have a question, Dr. Rondo, is in, just as we wrap it up here. So we went through, I saw some different things, overbite, underbite, by, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, so for the, for the practitioner out there that wants to learn more and, and get more, what's the next step or what are they, what would you recommend? I mean, you covered this today, but what's the next natural progression and, and how would they apply this in their practice and what does that look like? How long does it take to, to get to an expert level in this area? I, I honestly think they should take a basic course from somebody, and there's a lot of courses out there, but when you, when you look into the course, make sure they're teaching functional appliances as well as braces, not just braces. And, and, so, and I would recommend at least an eight-day course. My basic course, level one, is eight days, and they can take it online too. And um, my online course, you watch 20 minutes, and then you have to pass a test, 10 questions. If you pass the test, get 80%, you go to the next 20 minutes. If not, if you're penalized, you have to watch me again to pass the test. But that way, I can give you CE credits. So I'm deprived, my course are approved by AGD and all the different, um, all the different uh, groups of the states, all the different states, all the state boards approve my courses. So take a, take a complete course. I mean, don't take a one-day course. Take, a, take an eight-day course. And there's a bunch of, of them out there, but make sure they cover functional appliances and braces, not just braces. Because that's what you want to do. You, you can't, I could not treat those children that I just showed you with just braces. You have to fix the bone problems, the skeletal problems, they call it the orthopedic problems with functional appliances, and then you straighten the teeth with the braces. And, and, you, and if an orthodontist that you're dealing with is doing functional appliances and then braces, that's who you want to deal with. If they're just doing braces and extractions and headgear, I think try to find somebody else. Either take the course yourself or find somebody else that can treat your patients correctly. Because I honestly think the functional approach is, is the way to go. And here it's all over Europe, all over South America. And in North America, unfortunately, it's, it's most of the orthodox being done is, is being done with a retractive technique and by cuspid extractions and headgear. And I just don't think it's, I don't think it's as good a technique. Love it. Well, I mean, that's it for questions. Dr. Rondo, do you have any parting comments for the audience before I take it away? Well, I just wanted to thank them for attending, and it was a pleasure to, to address them. And, and certainly, I, I hope that I've been able to inspire them to, to, number one, want to learn more, or number two, at least, refer your patients to someone who's going to use functional appliances on them and not extract their teeth. And the easiest way to figure it out is when you make the referral, find out if they're going to treat them there or whether they're going to wait, put them on a list and bring them back when they're 12 or 13, all their permanent teeth are out. That's, that's not what you want for these kids. You want these kids, and, and pay attention, it's very simple, if there's no room for the lateral incisors on the top or the bottom, you need to expand the arch until there's enough room for the central lateral incisors. If you do that, you're going to help a lot of patients and you're going to prevent extractions of permanent teeth. So, Wonderful. yes, well, it was, a, it was a pleasure, and thank you, Don, for, for your help, and I hope that everybody enjoyed the presentation. Yeah, it was my yeah thank you, Dr. Dr. Rondo. Yeah. yeah, thank you, absolutely. Another great session. Love the slides. Great cases. Lee, thank you again for helping organize, and thank you to all our affiliates for promoting it. Thank you, dentists, for, for coming out and continuing to grow and being dedicated to learning. 
I, you know, I hope with this new insight you can take it tomorrow, put it in, put something new in your practice, a little new expertise. You know, get that CE credit. You got the test. You got the digital. Um, if you do want the free online effectiveness evaluation from me and Office Site, just go ahead and shoot an email to webinars at officesite.com. Um, otherwise, we're going to send out some communications just with the follow-up and the information and the recording, um, so you can use that to reinforce the learning. But other than that, I mean, that, that's that's a wrap for tonight. Really, thank you for coming out, and the webinar is now concluded. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you, everybody.